Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Ryan Owens from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Ryan Owens, the Senior Data Warehouse Analyst at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Ryan, hello and welcome. Hi, how are you today? Good, good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. It's kind of warm down here in New Orleans, Louisiana, but you know, it's if you can't feel it, then it's, you know... <laughs> So yeah. it's wrong with that, but it's, it's been it's good out here. Um, I, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, the opportunity to join the podcast today. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. And I have to tell you, New Orleans is one of my favorite cities on the planet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was great. Everything oh. else is great, too. <laughs> yeah, if you love food and music, New Orleans is the place to be. <laughs> oh, yes. That's, what's, that's where it is. <laughs> Indeed. Um, it's been too long. I got to get myself back there some sometime soon. <laughs> oh, see, I'm sporting my Mardi Gras tie right now. So, you oh, know, I love it. a little bit of my colors there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So you're the Senior Data Warehouse Analyst at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana. So tell me, what, for, especially for people who may not know worldwide, what is Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana? Yeah, so Blue Cross Blue Shield Louisiana is a health insurance company. Um, and we have about 3,000 so um, uh, employees. And uh, one of our uh, mission, our mission rather, is to to stay committed to improve the health and lives of Louis, Louisianians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. It's kind of tongue twisted there too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, you know, it happens so much to all of us. And uh, oh, I, um, as much talking as I do publicly, uh, it happens to me all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, and and in the United States, for people who don't know, um, health insurance is dictated by state. It's not a federal thing, right? Yes, so. absolutely. In, in Louisiana, um, the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana is one of those. So, um, you know, we have the association and then it kind of by state, um, it took us down to whoever you know, wants that. So, uh, so you mentioned that you're the senior, so you, we mentioned you're the senior data warehouse analyst. And um, so what's your, what is it that you do and what's your typical work week look like? So I work with, a, a team of uh, blue uh, employees, so we call ourselves blue employees, mm -hmm. and uh, some some contractors that come in and help us out as well, um, and manage our intake and deliver uh, deliver a lot of projects that are from our internal business, which can, which can come from different departments, and external business that could be from other vendors, partners, um, and hospitals. Um, and so we manage a lot of data that comes in and we may have some bi-directional um, uh, deliverables, but I really try to uh, work with our extracts. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I work with our extracts rather, and that's part of one of my roles. And um, we, uh, what we do is we get all the business requirements from those internal and external uh, uh, business, business owners. And so... I do my best to uh, deliver as much as I can and as quickly as I can uh, to those partners. Oh, very cool. So uh, again, just uh, that's got to be a, a lot of data that you are working with and delivering and managing and and extracting there. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of analysis as well. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. this is 
lots of data that we do have and uh, but it's good because you learn so much there's so many different areas um, yeah. that you can learn about and um, data is just it because data is everywhere why not take a look at it and why not learn all about the business indeed oh I love that um I, I bet that uh, takes some skill so as an analyst you're not just looking at numbers and crunching numbers you're having to interact with the humans as well and making sure you understand the requirements and making sure you communicate it back out and you, it sounds like you're doing some analysis as well to let them know what their data is saying Yes, absolutely. And trying to get them to the right data. That's the main thing. You know, you can have, you know, you heard the garbage in, garbage out, but you really want to get everyone, get your uh, your business owners to the right data. Um, and especially those that will work with data, you want to make sure it's curated properly as well. And one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this uh, analyst role is because I love people. Like you said, you know, I love to talk to people uh, before I came in um, uh, at, with a coding background. So I, you know, I had the software developing background and yes, it was good for a while, but yeah. it was good for me to work more with people, um, speak more to people, not just the team, but also on an enterprise level, think more of a, a leadership level. And once I've gotten to that point and I was um, advised to look into these roles um, by many people, <laughs> um, not just because of the personality, but because of the ideas and the vision that I, that I had for myself, I decided to take this role and um, see what I can do with this, see how I can make it my own and see what I can own in this role. So let's back it up then. You're talking a little bit about how you, um, why you wanted to get into this role. So let's let's back it way up. So, yeah, so tell yeah. me, Ryan. So when <laughs> you were you were just a little kid in, yeah. in what we in the U.S. call the elementary school, was oh. this the dream? Did you did you want to like say I, when I grow up I want to be a senior data warehouse analyst? Oh <laughs> man, or what uh, was the dream? <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, I think it, that's that's a hard no, right? <laughs> but the first thing. Uh, I know I wanted to work in technology, um, definitely in computers. Uh, I know that way back, you know, even when I was in my mom and dad's offices, whenever I would go to their offices, I would they would always have pinball, uh, one of their little computer games up there, or solitaire, one of those first computer games up there. Um, so, you know, working on Windows ninety eight. <laughs> but it, it was, it, you know, I, I want I wanted to work in technology. Uh, I didn't know how far it would go. Mm -hmm. And even continuing, you know, from an elementary, you know, going into middle school and high school, you know, technology was always on my brain, looking at coding, maybe a little bit of database, some web design. I was all over the place. I never really knew where I could put my foot in and, mm -hmm. and, have a, and be able to really enjoy that. And so once I got to college, if I can continue, you know, um, I didn't think I would like coding as much yeah. because there were so many programming languages that I had to learn and even mm -hmm. learning systems and learning database and then going into cybersecurity is so many avenues, right? And um, I didn't see where I could fit in. So then at that point, I'm like, okay, let's just, let's get this degree. Let's figure out what we can do and let's get a job. Uh, <laughs> let's, you know, let's what was get the degree. degree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So my degree was in computer information systems. Oh, very uh, cool. Okay. Yes. And I can concentrated in networking and a little bit of programming as well. So uh, it was it was all over the place. And of course, at my school at Univers uh, uh, Northwestern State University, um, it was very interesting because it was split into three different majors. So all of my classes went to uh, in the in the business department. All of my classes were from uh, business administration, accounting, and um, computer information systems. So I had a mix of all of those. Oh, and yeah. It was kind of hard, but I was able to join all of that and see. Okay, I can match all these to any kind of business. Right. And it's not just about a standardized you know, business administration or standardized computer information systems. I can do so much with this because it's, it's so uh, it varies. Right. In the, the roles and responsibilities and um, all the different majors that come about it. Anything you do outside of graduation, you can make your own and hopefully something that you know will interest you later on. So once graduating, um, I got a job with um, a consulting firm. 
and I loved everything about it. You know, I didn't know that it was, it was really consulting. I thought it was just all technology. Uh, but then I had to learn how to interview. I remember I had to interview with so many different, yeah, for so many roles. Um, and it got to my very last role. I was there for four years. And in my last role, um, I actually became a data uh, analyst and so in a way, a product owner. Um, mm -hmm. And that sparked a little bit of data management. Mm -hmm. It gave me a little taste of it. And I was learning a little bit about inf Informatica and the software development side. And so when I left that consulting firm, I decided to go to Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, and take on a full-time role as um, a software developer. And so that's where my taste of that life cycle, the data life cycle really stuck in for me instead of doing so many different roles, um, a little bit of programming, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I wanted to be, you know, stable <clears throat> in a role for a while. And so this, that's where uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Louisiana uh, gave me an opportunity and I took, took heed and went straight for it. And I love everything about it so far. I've been there for six years and three months now. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Oh, Thank I you. love that. So, so you started as a software developer for them. Yes. Yes. So then where, how did you move then and transition and grow into the uh, senior data warehouse analyst? Yes, absolutely. So once, uh, once an opportunity came about uh, for this role and, um, I think data governance opened up for me first. And so I kind of walked into the data governance role um, as a, a senior data, it was just still a senior data warehouse analyst, but under data governance. Mm -hmm. And I loved everything about the role as well. I loved uh, meeting new uh, business owners, working with business owners, uh, analyzing data for them, solving problems, um, creating um, solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, trying to persuade in a way that I can build trust with them. And that was a major um, part of the role. I wanted to be able to build trust and not just because of who I am um, and you know, with the role that I'm in, but it's because of what I needed to do to make them aware that the right that they're getting the right data, that they're getting the things that they need to do for their job as well. So with the advisement of some of the, my peers, um, they also persuaded me to go ahead and take the opportunity to get into this role. Um, and I think about a year or so later, um, I kind of went into a, another side, even though I'm still the same, the senior uh, data warehouse analyst, um, I am now working with product management. And with product management, this is why, this is where I now own the data extracts uh, for the enterprise. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And that's so interesting that you first started under data governance because so many people um, and so many companies we hear, you know, pushback, you know, that data governance is a dirty word. We don't need data governance and analysts don't touch data governance or have anything to do with data governance. But I love this, that you have analysts um, within the data governance uh, office, so to speak. That yes. is that's great. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Data governance, you know, we just came from the DGIQ conference and it was wonderful. And, you know, that was one of the things. Why is it so dirty to say data governance? But you have to understand what it really does for your company, your firm, your enterprise. Um, it's a it's a good medium to where if you go to that, you know, you obviously you have legal that's totally separate from this. But, you know, data governance is what a company needs, right, to really move forward in a lot of things so to keep to keep things standard or whatever whatever you decide to use data governance for everyone uses it differently um and i know for my company um uh, we our, our data governance is for our uh, enterprise data warehouse we also have an igo with uh, an information governance office that supersedes all of that for the enterprise itself um, but our data governance is for the enterprise data warehouse we service that Oh, that's so but we, yes, yeah. but we work we work directly with our information governance office. Yeah. For anything that goes in and anything comes out. <laughs> and I want to touch on another thing that you called out too, that you really work to earn the trust of the people that you're working with. Is you just don't throw numbers at them and say, hey, this has data quality behind it. There's some it's marketing and communication skills, and um they need to trust you as much as you know, and just not and you need that trust versus just throwing numbers on a piece of paper to them or, you know, in an email or PowerPoint or whatever. 
Right. Absolutely. And, and it all starts with, you know, how are you, how can you be an effective communicator? Mm-hmm. Um, I could say back in college uh, and I, and I still work on it today. I'm not, I'm not perfect at this. <laughs> um, and, you know, back in college, I was uh, a, um, a, a leader in uh a freshman orientation leader. And so with that, I had to be able to effectively communicate with parents and with students, the potential students that were coming to the school. And so if I didn't know something, I needed to also say, okay, well, I don't know this, but let me figure it out. And so that's, even though you may not know the answer to something, you you know, going back to that, you will have to go and figure it out. And you should, because that is a job, that is your role. And if you communicate that to your business owner, even though you don't know the answer, it is important to them to say, okay, well, I'm glad that he doesn't know let, and let him go find the answer. And then he'll communicate that back to me. That's, that's building trust as well, especially, you know, you don't want to know it all. If you do have a know it all, it's, it's fine. But, you know, you want someone to be human and say, you know what, I don't know, but let me figure it out. Oh, I really appreciate that. It took me way too long to figure out that, <laughs> that lesson. I will have to say, I was taught that you should, you know, be authoritative and, and know it all. And, and yes. but, you know, you just don't, you we are human, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you um, say, you know, you're, you're not perfect in your communication. Nobody is, you know, we've been talking about it a lot at Data Diversity about progress, not, not perfection. Absolutely. Right? Always working to get better. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Absolutely. That's that's, that's a major, that's a, I think that's a, a really good rule of thumb. You have to, you know, it's it's yeah. progress. Um, yeah. You know, it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Every, honestly. Absolutely. So let's let's talk about that then. So, so what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career? What's what's been a big aha moment? Nothing is ever going to be the same. Technology and decisions will change frequently. The <laughs> it's it's and it's happening. It's happening at, at my enterprise. It's happening all over the country. Uh, technology is is going from it went from C plus plus to you know Spark and all these other types of technologies that you have today. I mean, we used to have Cobol. I used to program in Cobol, right? right. And we use Cobol now. I mean, I know some banks do and all, but now you have you know you have Python. You have all these different programming languages, all the different technologies and, and software is coming out, and you know, it's, and it's coming in uh, in very high frequencies. Actually, it's not as low as it used to be, but now because of the different research and um, the different genius, the, the minds. Um, of these, of these, of this new generation, right? It's mm-hmm. so much that's coming about, and you have to be able to learn something new, and that's that's the major uh, that's the major thing for it. You know, you have to learn something new, and take it as an opportunity to learn new things to enhance your data set. That's I I I'll stick by that. Oh, I I love that messaging. It, things are constantly changing. We can Absolutely. We cannot expect things to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And the decision will always change as well. You know, you can't, yeah. it's not going to be the same all the time, you know, and, and companies are actually, are actually starting to adopt that, right? So, you know, that agile methodology, you know, when you, you have to be able to work with change and no matter what, it's not all going to be waterfall anymore. Everything changes. So how do you keep up with the change and how do you keep up with the new tech that you need to use? Mm-hmm. So I'll do my research. Uh, that's that's the that's key for me I have to do research and if something were to change within the next week um, I just need to be aware of where I am in learning that one thing first before it changes Um, I know that I lean on our management and leadership to uh, make those decisions for us Mm -hmm. Uh, and I of course I do my due diligence to ask the proper questions and to be in the know when it's, you know, when I need to know, <laughs> especially, you know, in those times, but um, there are, it, it can be hard, 
it can be hard to uh, keep up with those things, I will have to say. But do your due diligence to um, stay alert with all the new technologies um, and also uh, be aware of what, be just be aware of what could change, you know, because it's not all, always going to be there. I, I love that. I love that you keep learning. You know, yes. I've talked to so many people, you know, I think, you know, too, as growing up, as especially for my generation, I think I'm a bit older. I won't say how old. Um, but... Oh, you're not. I can see you're like 25, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, you know, that you, you get to a point where you, you know, you, you know, everything, you've learned everything and you're just, you know, sailing, you know, the rest of your way. But, you know, learning is so fun. Oh, yes, it is. And if we stop learning, then we just, we really age. <laughs> well, and here's the other thing too. I've learned so much being in this role, being yeah. in this company. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're a big family at Blue Cross Blue Shield, Louisiana. Right. Um, yeah. we, we want to build others up mm -hmm. uh, and put people into positions to where you can achieve whatever goal that, you know, you see fit. And I love how our management and leaders uh, really take a look at us and, and make sure that we are in the right place. Because if they see something that's not right with us, they'll ask about it. You know, we have a lot, you know, our one-on-ones, that's, that's key for our management uh, to have with their employees. And when they see that there's something not right, or they see performance, you know, they want to make sure that their, their employees are in the right spot. You know, are you sure you're okay? Is everything is everything good with this? How is everything with this project? How's this research going? You know, they're they're really concerned with their employees, and I and I absolutely love it. And that's why I'm still here. <laughs> you know, I love everything about the role, um, and the and the data that we that we collect, and the and the data that we um, um, are able to uh, put out for our business owners, honestly. And I learned so much from, you know, the university and the conferences and they wow. send us the conferences. That's what I really love too, because I learned from, you know, I network with, you know, not just the sponsors and not just the people that are, um, that are participating, but those that are actually presenting, you know, I network with them. I, I try to figure out what they're doing in their uh, companies so that maybe I can bring a little bit back to mine, but if we don't take it in, then maybe it's something that I can learn for myself to where eventually down the line, it could, and if it does change and it does fit into what they want to do later on, then it will work. You know, I, it's one of my favorite parts about uh, our community the, the and the data management community is the networking and how much, I mean, I get inspired every day, every webinar I present, I produce and, and conference I go to just, I'm in awe of how kind and how um, giving people are of their time to each other, to learn from each other and talk to each other and help support each other. It's just, it's great. It's really very, Absolutely. very cool. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And of course, the destinations are great, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with San Diego. San Diego. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and I went to EDW World as well at like 2019 before it all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're back in person finally again. Yay for EDW in fall in Anaheim, yes. California. We're, we're oh, going to be going and to I wish <laughs> and I really want to make it to that, too. Um, that's, where I, that's where I first fell in love with the uh Certified Data Management Professional Certification. Oh, that's cool. Well, well, let's get into that here in a, in a um, well, let's tell me about the certification first before I get into the next question. So since you mentioned it, so you can just define it for absolutely. those listeners. Yes, absolutely. So the Certified Data Management Professional Certification is uh, focused on data management. Um, all the, I believe it's 14 forgive me, pillars of the, uh, of, of the of data management, the Dama wheel, all of that. Um, if you don't know anything about it, you want to learn about it, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but go ahead and get this, this uh, the Dimbach uh, version two. It is a data management Bible, um, about 600 so pages worth of it. And it's amazing. Um, I love everything about the book and um, I use some of it today. There you go. Yep. I, I use it to plan this, but here's my copy. <laughs> <laughs> you, have all of it. Look, you got everything there. See? <laughs> and I love how you have all your tags. It's oh, just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Um, but the, the test was uh, when I took it in 2019, that was the first time, you know, that was the first conference I've ever been to oh, uh -huh. in a management conference. And 
when I took the test the first time, I did not pass. And I was a little upset by it because I finally found something that mm -hmm. I felt that I could focus my career on. Mm -hmm. And I was about two years into Blue Cross Blue Shield, Louisiana. So I was like, you know what? I need to really get this and focus and really uh, study hard for this exam because I had three three chances to do it. So um, those other two chances, I did not get it. I did not pass it. But then last year I came to DGIQ and my main goal was to get this certification. I studied hard for the last uh, three years and tried to, you know, I wanted to wait because I know we had COVID. I tried it again while, you know, uh, virtually when I was at home and I didn't pass it then. But then when I got, when I got to DGIQ last year, my goal was to get the certification and the first day, first try, got it. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was like relieved. I could relax for the rest of the day. <laughs> My mind wasn't boggled with all the terms and uh, it was just, it was too much, but I really, really love this book. I love everything about data diversity, bringing this to life, partnering with Dama and, and, and making sure that, you know, they introduced the foundation of data management to all of the participants and also, honestly to the world, yeah. because I mean, Everyone needs to know about, everyone knows about data, but they don't know how to use it. They don't know why it's, it's all over the place. But in order to organize the data, you know, these concepts, these principles are extremely important for those to um, understand as they move on within their careers in data management for their companies. Oh, that's some great advice. And, and thank you. And so I'm going to... Um... Since you work so much with data, and now you're that you're certified, congratulations! Yes. This is awesome. <laughs> um, so, what is your definition of data? Yeah, I I struggle with that, you know. And I I would say it's it's very simple, right? The definition of data is information. You look at um, all of the information that you collect about, for instance, a person. My name is Ryan Owens. I have a social security number. I have a birth date. I have an address. I have all these um, uh, characteristics and things about myself. Um, and all of those things pertain to me. Um, and I, like I said, I know that this might be extremely simple, but it's really just information about something not just about a person, but something, you know, how, uh, you know, what makes that thing happen? What, what is it? And what, how can I organize it um, to make it something that I want to look for later? And I feel like that's what, you know, a lot of our CEOs and out of our uh, higher leadership wants to look at data. Um, they don't know the, you know, what a, an analyst really does with it. Um, they don't know what's really in a file, but they want to see how they can turn this file into a dashboard to where they can really use that data. It's all about how you can use it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, what, that's what you want, because you can take a raw file with, that has information about something, um, but what can you do to use that data is, I think, where, where it has to, um, which goes to the next question of that you know what is data but then how can you use it yeah oh i love that a lot um and and you work with data a lot so and, and as have someone in a career of data management do you know do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why i see it increasing and here's and this is and the reason why I say that is because we have a lot of AI technology. All this is all this automation is coming into play. I love automation. I love making things easier, quicker um, for you know a very simple task to do. Mm -hmm. But in order for and, and the reason why I say increase is because even though we have all of this, we still have to have people that understand it. Because if you don't understand the build of it, the background code of it, 
and technology, even though with technology getting smarter and smarter, even on its own, learning, you know, these machine learning models, all of this, if you don't understand it, then how can you manage it? Mm -hmm. And you have to be it because you don't want to, you know, we see all these um, iRobot and all of that, you know, they're doing all the things for us, but there's someone that really understands the model. Someone really understands how it's learning. And if you can, if you can learn that skill set, uh, you'll be able to manage those uh, automated technologies. And that'll be extreme for that one or many individuals that get into data management now. Oh, that makes so much sense. We've seen a lot of companies try to stand up um, machine learning and, and AI machine learning, especially, uh, and, and, and then suddenly realize, oh, we forgot the data prep. We need a data model. <laughs> yeah, you have to start. You have to, you know, yeah. what's your foundation? How do you, how do you, you know, how do you look at things from a, um, you know, from a, hmm, how can I say this? You know, what is the what is the peak? What is the high point um, of where you see something that's so little, like a, a a small small raw file go? You know, how do you see you know the the AI technology um, and how can you manage that stuff? It's 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 one of those things that I feel that you know a lot of people look at it from a surface and they don't really understand the you know the 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 big picture later. So how can you look at from the big picture and then try to be able to manage that big picture, starting from that very small thing? So, Ryan, you've given you've given a lot of really great advice already. So um, with those, is there anything additional that you would give advice to for people looking to get into a career in data management? Yeah, I'll just go back and reiterate, you know, just do your research. Mm -hmm. uh, there is there's so much out there to learn from. Um, there's so many books. A lot of people write you know, many, you know, data management for dummies or any, 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 any type of, you know, data management or leadership related book to learn about your data because every company has data. Mm -hmm. So why not be part of that? Why not be able to be part of something that you can manage, right? And not just be a software developer, because even with a software developer, you still have to manage data. You're transforming it um, into something that's more visible for uh, someone else. Um, you know, there are a lot of blogs, the working groups, um, and even um, programs that are out there that allow for you to learn um, about data management. So I would say continue to do your research and even try to network with those that are um, in different roles within your company um, or look for um, partnering, yeah, partnering um, uh, companies that do that as well. And just, just try to look into those roles and see what it is and how can you um, see yourself in that role one day. Ah, such good advice. Well, Ryan, uh, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Oh, no, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, thank you to Dataversity. Um, I enjoyed every bit of this and I would love to be back again one day and hope to see you all soon at the next conference. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I look forward to seeing you again. It, it's so nice to be back in person and seeing and, and chatting, oh, you say, so. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And, and say hi to New Orleans for me, because, you know, again. I sure will. Hope to see you in Mardi Gras next year. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up in today in the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, and stay curious, people. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.